Hello everybody, I'm Andy with Liminal Entertainment Technologies, and in this video we're going to talk about using Zoom ISO with the Isadora Media Server. And the purpose of this is to show you how we can bring the individual participants in the Zoom meeting into a media server for compositing or effects work. Uh, and this will be helpful for deployments like uh, video walls or for those of you who do uh, live online theater. So without further ado, let's switch over to the Mac and get into it. So to get started, I'm going to create one output. I'm going to send it to Siphon. So I'm going to make sure that I have Siphon enabled just underneath NDI here. And if you want to learn more about the Siphon protocol, we have a separate video on that that you can watch. So I'm going to go over to outputs. I'm going to set that to one. I'm going to double check that my default display and my default output size are correct. And that looks good to me. Next, I'm going to go over to output one and I'm going to find a participant on this drop down list. And for now, I think I'm going to go for Jim. So I'm going to grab Jim here. And then just to verify that I have it, I'm going to show all windows and you can see that, yep, I have a, a video of Jim there. So that's what we're looking for. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open my Isadora project and I'll go full screen on this so it's easier to see. Now I have my stage preview enabled inside of Isadora that's accomplished by going to output force stage preview. So you can see the output of the media server there. And because I'm using Siphon right now, I'm going to open up a Siphon receiver and then I'm going to add a projector. I'm going to hook those up so that the output of the siphon receiver goes directly to the projector. So I'm just going to merge those together. And then I had that line that's drawn there. And then underneath the server drop down list, I'm going to select Zoom ISO 1. And now we have a video of Jim coming in. And just to prove to you that the media server is in fact able to modify this, I'm going to get the dots actor and I'm going to slip it in between these two. And you can see as I adjust the dot size that we have an effect now playing on top of Jim's video there. So we know we have video coming in. So for the most basic purposes of getting an HD video in, that's all you need to do. And Siphon will be a good choice if you're running on the same machine, because Isidore is cross-platform, you would have that option, depending on resource allotment and availability. But let's say we want to do a little more than that. Let's go ahead and repeat that process, and now we'll have four independent sources coming in. So I'm going to go to a smaller size on that. I'm going to go back to Zoom ISO. And I'm going to set my output number to four. And I'm just going to select some other users here uh, that I know will have good-looking video. So we'll do maybe... Maybe these here. And so now I have those coming out. And if I go back into Isadora and I copy my siphon receiver, I'll just duplicate it. You'll see now I have ISO output two, three, and four. And if I change here, you'll see that I have the different users that I've selected there on that drop down list. So we're good to go in terms of being able to receive those independently. But we can do those all at the same time as well. So if I copy the siphon receiver, and I select, maybe I set this back to one, and then I set this to two, and then I'll do another one set to three, and another one set to four. So now we have one, two, three, and four. Now we can composite these together if we wanted to. So maybe what I wanna do is add a multi-mix, so I can combine a bunch of videos together and then maybe I want a, a zoomer and I want to shrink this down to maybe, you know, 30% of what it currently is. I can do it like that and then I can duplicate it, connect that to each of the other ones like so. And then I can bring them back into the multi-mix. So I can connect there and then I can sort of pan it over so they're not overlapping anymore. So I can just adjust the center point like that. And then I could adjust the center point of my next video as I continue to add these to the chain. So I'll go maybe to the other direction with this video. And then I could um, take my fourth video and maybe I'll, I'll put that one at the top. So I'm just gonna adjust the, the vertical center Great, so now I have kind of my own custom gallery view, kind of a, an upside down T shape, and that will be a way that you can see all these videos coming in at once. So that would be one option if you're looking to bring them in that way. Now, another thing we could do is we could create something that switches the input. So if I only wanna see one person at a time as I move through these different scenes, and I wanna select who that person is that we're seeing, ZoomISO can actually be remote controlled via OSC, and Visadora has OSC capabilities. So let's talk about how to do that. So if I, Go ahead and double click in the canvas. I can create an OSC multi-transmit actor. Now I get to select some parameters here and the information that I need to know is available inside of the Zoom ISO settings window. So I'll show all my ISO windows again. I'll select my Zoom ISO settings and I'll go over to the OSC settings area where I can see Zoom ISO is transmitting to local loopback 
uh, and it is transmitting on port 1234, which is Isadora's default. But I'm only interested in receiving right now. So all I have to know is that I can send it to 9090, and then Zoom ISO will be able to receive that command. So I'm going to go localhost, and I'm going to go 9090 on the port. The command I'm looking for is slash zoom slash username slash output ISO, all caps on the ISO. And that command's available in the manual, and we also talk about OSC separately. Um, so if you want, you can review the Zoom OSC videos or the Zoom OSC documentation to see how we structure this command. But most of the time, you're going to do something like this, Zoom, and then a username, and then we want to use the output ISO user action to be able to select who we want. And this command takes two inputs, so I'm going to set the inputs to two. The first input that it takes is going to be a text type, so I'm going to add text actor and hook up the text actor to the first parameter. This is going to be the name of the person that we want to look at. For now, I'm going to set this to Chris. The second value is the ISO output that we want to route that person to. So I'm going to put this on one for now. Then I'm going to copy this, make a duplicate with uh, command D, and I'm going to put a different person in here. So I'll do Richard. So now I have the two usernames of two people in the call. And I'm going to have them both routed to output one. The next thing I'm going to do is add a keyboard watcher. So when I hit the one key, I'm going to hit single quote one, single quote enter. I'm going to connect the key to the trigger. And then I'm going to do the same thing, but with the two key. And then I'm going to connect that to the other trigger. And then finally, I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to do a siphon receiver and a projector. And I'm going to hook those up and I'm going to select output one. And right now, that's set to Jim, but if I hit the one key, it's set to Chris, and if I hit the two key, it's set to Richard. So I can hit back and forth between these keys, and we're switching, basically cutting between them. So you could have an enter scene trigger control this, you could have, um, you could have an effect, some live input, something related to the chat, all sorts of different triggers that can occur inside of Isadora, MIDI notes, all of that stuff could affect who we're looking at at this given point. So you can utilize the benefits of Isadora's logic engine to control the actual video routing that's occurring. And that's one of the things that's special about Zoom ISO is it allows us to instantly cut between sources without any transition time so that you can have these fast cuts built into your patches or into some of the work that you're doing in your run of show to be able to reroute those input sources so that you can use them as outputs inside of the media server. So those are the basics of using Zoom ISO with Isadora. Um, I'll go ahead and show you one other way of getting video inside here, and that's going to be using NDI. Now, by default, Isadora does not have the ability to receive NDI. That's a plugin you have to get. So I'm going to pop out to Safari. I'm going to go to, I'm just going to Google Isadora NDI plugin. And the first thing that comes up is the Isadora NDI watcher. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to hit download. And that's going to go in my downloads folder. I'll go ahead and open that folder. And there's some instructions here, um, but I've done this before. So I'm going to double click on the NDI watcher. I'm going to double click on the Macintosh folder. And I'm just going to copy this with command C and I'm going to paste it in here with command V. So now the plugin exists inside of the Isadora 64 bit plugins folder. Now I will have to restart Isadora in order to get access to that. So I'm going to go quit and I'm not going to save. And then I'm going to run Isadora again. Now that I've done that, if I type in NDI, NDI Watcher 4 Beta comes up, and I have an OK about it being a release. I get some documentation that pops up. Now I can do the same thing as before. I can tie in a projector, hook those up, click on my NDI source. I have a bunch of NDI sources on my network, but I know the one I'm looking for is going to be the Mac Mini ISO 1. And I'm going to go Output, Four Stage Preview, and there's Chris. And again, we can change these NDI sources so I can get a different one. So there's Jeffrey. And we can continue to go through the list and grab the different available sources. And now these are coming in through NDI. So we talk a little bit about the differences in, between NDI and Siphon in other videos. But basically, NDI is going to be great if Isadora is running on a separate machine from the computer that Zoom ISO is running on. Siphon is going to be best if they're running on the same machine because it will have lower latency and lower processor overhead. So those are the basics of using Zoom ISO with Isadora. Of course, uh, if you have any questions, you're welcome to send us an email at info at liminalet.com or check out the other videos in our series here on tutorials for Zoom ISO so you can learn how to build these integrations into your production workflows.